our headquarters is in San Francisco, but that's probably 35% of our staff. The remaining part is they're distributed around the world. And so we always had to have the tools in place to not only make sure that people were enabled to work, but they could be doing their work as efficiently as possible. And it just, you know, once COVID happened, we kind of realized that, hey, look, this is not just for a subset of companies anymore. This is for every company. Everybody, all the companies now have to make sure that their employees have everything at their fingertips to work and to make sure that they're productive. And I think we're going to see something really interesting is, you know, once the pandemic kind of slows down and, you know, people start going back to the office, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of CFOs out there really trying to decide, hey, you know, should we be keeping these really expensive offices open? Is this the wave of the future? Or, you know, hey, do we realize that like a lot of people shouldn't have to deal with commuting to work and all the rigors of sitting in traffic trying to get to an office if they can be just as efficient working remotely? And so from our point of view, it's, yeah, it, it put a fire under us because our partners were asking for this. But I also think this is kind of like the, the wave of the future is that we're going to see some big changes in the way people work going forward. I think that's true. I think we already have. And I think that that genie is out of the bottle and it's not going back in that. Oh, yeah. I think that people like working from home, generally speaking. And so why, why wouldn't you want to just be in a comfortable spot dressed like you are today? Yep. And, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you, you don't always have to be a, a vid- videoed or visual. You can also just turn it off and say, I'm having a bad hair day. You know, that, that kind is of thing. true. And, uh, true. and sometimes, sometimes we're, we get a little bit, what's the word I'm looking for? Fatigued. You know, there is a, a term now called Zoom fatigue because people are always having to look people in the eyes like we are right now. And yep. they're always having to be visual. And sometimes it's nice to just have a conversation without having somebody staring back at you. You know, and on other occasions, though, it's really good because you yep. know if you have that person's attention, you know what's happening in their background. And it's, it's kind of a, a cool thing. This one guy I was talking to, his three-year-old daughter, I think she's three, crawled up in his lap while we were talking. And he said, this is Isabella. I want you to, to meet her, you know, and say, say, hi, Isabella. And so we did a little of that. And instead of shooing her away, he just brought her right into the conversation. And how cool is that? You know, oh, so absolutely. That, that's the kind of stuff that happens that real life happens because we have visual communication. And it is true that we we connect in another whole level because communications is about 90% visual. And and that's just all part of face-to-face. Where I see this is going is that, it's kind of what you mentioned, is that sometimes you want the visual, sometimes you need the audio, and no one's going to call into a conference center or a call center and say, hey, look, you know, let me talk to... Let me talk to you, Dave, or Zoom. No, that's yeah. Zoom is for people who already know each other or people who have been introduced and they're, they're willing to have that conversation. You're always going to need the audio for just the generic, hey, I need to call into a place to you know, talk to someone randomly. And there's going to be times that, you know, <laughs> just like myself, sometimes I don't want to be seeing people, you know, and I'm like, I, I like to have a good audio. And or if I'm on the move and I'm walking around the city, you know, I, I don't want to turn on my Zoom. I, yeah. I want to make sure I, I have the ability to make a phone call, but still have all everything at my fingertips to, you know, collaborate however I want. You're going to see some crazy technologies coming out. And that's not just from us, you know, that's from a lot of different cool companies out there that are really pushing the envelope. If nothing else, I'm just, I'm excited because this is going to, you know, put a real kick to the butt, and especially in telecommunications. And you can see companies that are excelling and then you're going to see companies that are just, they never thought that they had to put more money into R and D and they're going to quickly realize like, Oh, so wow. Like we are far behind the, the ball on this one now. So, you know, we're going to have to wake up soon and not just rest on our laurels anymore. So, you know, for me, it's, this is a really interesting time in the telecom world, you know, and I'm excited to see where it goes. And obviously my hats off to all the healthcare providers and everybody who's, you know, on the front line fighting this. But, you know, there are some silver linings around it, which is it's really making people rethink the way they're working and, you know, the, the way technology should be going and stuff. You know, there are still 200 million plus landline phones that businesses are using and have been loathe to give it up. 
Oh, and yeah. now they're being forced to give it up. And we're starting to see everything change. Absolutely. Well, and I heard uh, even today I was on a call and they mentioned how, you know, in the U.S. we're a little bit farther ahead on the cloud transition. But if you go to Europe right now, it's almost like still an open field where majority of the companies in Europe, you know, are still on the traditional, you know, box in their closet where they're not expecting to move to the cloud. And now they're kind of, you know, having a, a opening where they're like, shoot, you know, our on-prem PBX doesn't work anymore. We need to move to the cloud. It's not like, should we move to the cloud? It's now we must move to the cloud. So there's going to be some really interesting opportunities for all sorts of cloud providers coming up. It's, it's a whole new world. I mean, we watched that happen when Ring Central, a born in the cloud telecommunications company, bought a good chunk of Avaya and is now working like crazy to get those phones over to, into the cloud. As one of those guys that stepped into this whole cloud communications world in 2002, that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, and you talk about said, visionaries. You were there before yeah, everybody else was. So that's, a, <laughs> that's the true visionary right work. there. You know, yeah, it was crazy. Is it voice over the internet? Are you kidding me? You know, and, and remember the days we were trying to put it over DSL because a T1 cost $1,200. Oh, yeah. And, and now we're trying putting to keep out, up time when you have a DSL line that, you know, you have <laughs> flaps yeah. in your DSL. And you're like, well, I don't think it's my software. I think it's your internet connection. And they're like, well, yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I have one gig up and one gig down or not one meg up one meg down you know yeah it can't be my internet that's right. So. <laughs> that's right it was a whole nother world and today we're talking yeah i mean gigs that are being delivered to a residential home you know i mean it's just unbelievable the changes that have happened over the last two decades but oh, we're absolutely. here now and cloud communications is all that we dreamed it would be and so you know, I'm excited about where this goes and how much more productive our society gets as a result of it. And for all those innovators out there like you and 2600s people, you're cutting edge. You're developing things that I'm sure are kind of in the garage right now that yeah. are going to be the next big thing. And so I'm excited to watch it, Patrick. I, I yeah. Think no, I mean, Dave, I will be honest with you. One of my, my favorite things to do is join a nine hour product meetings. Like I love my product team. I like those meetings, but we have a, a small team called the skunk works team. They're working on some things that four to five years down the road. And some of the stuff that they're working on, when I come into those meetings, I'm like, wow, you guys, you guys are really the visionary where the technology is going. And this is exciting and I can't wait to see you know, how we eventually implement this. And to me, that's, that's the exciting part, you know, and, and right now it's like you, you mentioned a lot of this technology is to improve productivity. I think it's, you know, I would say not just improve productivity, it's to enable flexibility and the flexibility is going to be, you know, Hey, if you want to choose to work from your office, great. But if you want to move to France and work from France, fantastic. And I think in the past, you know, it's like you had to live where your office was and you're stuck there for 20, 30 years and stuff. Now people can move their families around and kind of brings more like inclusion in the world where, you know, you're, you, you 100% can move to any country you want to now. Well, maybe not any country, but a lot of the countries out there. And you can live there and get a different side of culture that you could never do if you're stuck in the same, you know, hometown that you've been there for 30 years and stuff. And I think that's the flexibility that, you know, really is not just going to drive innovation, but it's also going to drive like, you know, how people, you know, interact with each other. And I, I, that's the side that I'm super excited about. And your team is a perfect living example of how that can really go given the right tools. Absolutely. So, and if you don't have the right tools, you invent them. So it's been fun to watch, Patrick. Keep it going. And, Dave, uh, I really appreciate it. And again, you know, thanks for uh, kind of starting this whole revolution back in 2002. You know, we're just trying to pick up where you and a bunch of those guys back then started. So, you know, we're just taking it where you guys left off. <laughs>